in three, two. So what does happen after gender affirming therapy or gender confirmation surgery, so-called? There's not been a lot done on it, but uh, as far as research, but there is one study and there is one country where we see a lot of that data found. Let's explore that today as we watch our culture stray further every day. Howdy, my name is John Arthur for Further Every Day here, and I'm joined with uh, Miss Nikki and Steve. How are you all today? Good, how are you? Doing well. Glad Good. to have you in the chair of theology. Glad to be here. Sitting in the chair of philosophy here. Mr. Steve, how's it going? Dude, it is fantastic today. It is doing very, very well. Well, you look fantastic. And uh, well, Thank you very much, John you, Arthur. You don't sound fantastic. Well, we got to get a bit closer yeah, there. There's something <laughs> happening there. There you go. Now well, you, you sound, sound fantastic. fantastic. This is a different chair mic set up. I usually have it set up normally a, little bit, a different way. And, a little bit closer. You know, I'm sitting in the chair of culture, which is a little different because I'm normally politically incorrect. Yes, sir. Well, you're but always I'll, politically I'll, incorrect. I'll maybe tap dance over in that chair a little bit, maybe. You're culturally offensive, too, yeah. but that's okay yeah, that, we, we that love it that's why you're here thank you okay Appreciate so <laughs> back 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 on the so rails today you here. can offend a whole different stream of people <laughs> yeah there you go uh, uh, by the way that. we read those hate comments we value them so bring them on we always like uh we always like hearing from you so uh real quick let's go ahead and move into the meat of the subjects. Pull up that article. It'll be on the uh, Firefox capture, and it's going to be the study from Sweden where we saw 30 years uh, after they started to adopt uh, minor transition and, and uh, transition in general. And now they, you know, they've had full range uh, for gender confirmation surgery, so-called gender mutilation surgery, really, for almost. You know, it's been 30 years. 1972, actually. So it was 30 years at the time of this study. And now we have even more data. But 1972 is when they open it up. Uh, go ahead and go for, not that one, uh, the, the graph. It should have been the first one. If you could pull up the, thank you. That's exactly what we want to look at. So if you're on audio, we're going to try to describe this for you. But go ahead and, and take that, please, Mr. Producer. So what you see here is 30 years outside of the, um, outside of the surgery. And this is the mortality rate. This is not suicide per se, but this is mortality rate. And, and that is an important distinction because some people will say, well, it's not all suicide. You're right. A lot of it's drug overdose. A lot of it is, especially with female to male, an increase in criminality mm -hmm. for violent criminality. People who, female to male, you have a large dose of testosterone, the equivalent of going on uh, mm -hmm. competition levels of testosterone will change your yes, mind. Yeah. And it's not something, yeah. it's, it's not because they're women, it's because it's unnatural for them. Mm -hmm. It's because it's an unnatural load. And as this uh, timeline goes, you see 10 years after conf confirmation surgery, we see a precipitous drop off you see where that where that starts that's at the 10 year mark and it goes further and further down to the 30 year mark where you have a almost four time increase in mortality over the heterosexual population and by the way or excuse me excuse me the non not heterosexual the non uh, uh, tra transgender population this population also includes the L, the G, the B, uh, and the Q. So go ahead and bring us back. I just want to get everyone's thoughts on that because I think that's really interesting that we have a population that 10 years out regret the surgery and we see a precipitous increase in suicidality, in drug overdose, and you know just mental issues and by the way you link in the description below as always you're going to see an incredible uh, increase in uh, psychiatric problems so the claim that this is actually helpful for the transgender individual it, 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 the, the statistics just don't bear that mm -hmm. what are your thoughts my thought is is that you know there's going to be consequences to unnatural things that are happening in your body, especially females getting super large doses of testosterone. I mean, you think about it, females produce an extreme amount of estrogen, 
women are more emotional they're they're completely different than what men are complete like a complete opposite you 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 have one and then you take the opposite and that's what females are so and that's the way God made us. Well, even so, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's a male or a female. If you're pumping them full of hormones, by the way, men right. men getting right. pumped with estrogen has the same response. Men right. being pumped with testosterone mm -hmm. has the same response where you create Correct. an emotional imbalance. Either one of them. But what you find with females in testosterone is the, uh, the testosterone increases your your in addition to libido it's also your uh uh i'm i'm, I'm having a brain fart here but but your age your, your action you someone who has a lot of testosterone is a someone who aggressiveness is, aggressiveness your ability to take action your ability Correct. to to work harder also your drive that that's the word increases drive and so that drive if it's not tamed or tempered by by good thinking can obviously be very bad well especially when women number one have hormonal can have hormonal imbalances anyway and just as a personal testimony i know that 15 years ago um i was taking just an over-the-counter cream it was a hormonal it was and in, in introducing a, a hormone for the, my age and all that stuff but i i noticed that I was getting these um, quick temper reactions that I had never had before. And I had to go off of that because it was like, it, this is making me crazy. And this is just a minor thing. And just recently I was at the doctor's and she wanted to introduce uh, a hormonal pill for temporarily. And I said, absolutely not. I've already been down that road. The emotional turmoil that it caused, I'm, I'm not doing anything like that again. So this makes perfect sense to me number one um number two the problem here is that we this is a the, this is not common sense to make manipulations to the body to satisfy the mind when the mind is constantly changing the right. mind is not stable happiness comes and goes sadness comes and goes feelings come and go your body is going to stay the same so the emphasis should always be on the mind and bringing the mind into agreement with the body not the other way around absolutely and that's something that because here's the thing the mind is much more malleable than the physical form that's correct in spite of what uh um dr marcy um last week marcy such and such bowers uh, i believe it's marcy bowers who said that uh yeah. the the forgive me if you have kids in the room this is not the episode for them you get three seconds two seconds one second the penis is just an inverted clitoris it's like no right. it, it's not yes yeah. you have similar tissues but you are not god and by the way you're not actually as good of a doctor as you think you are you are having a very hard time with people like jazz jennings where Correct. you have everything rupturing and hemorrhaging at the seams after you got done cutting it because guess what you didn't have either of you ever done sewing have either of you of course ever? yes so so when when you're sewing and it's gonna be this is a graphic i'm sorry but when you're sewing uh gloves right so let, let, let's kind of euphemize this a little bit but when you're you're sewing gloves you have to have a strain relief for things to be able to move and to articulate mm -hmm. whatever they did they took too little of whatever and they were not able to give it that room that give and they they, they think that they need to do that to children so what was the uh the pain involved with all this it was horrendous i, I could imagine so, but you know this is, this is what we're told by by jasmine have no reason to, to believe this is a very painful surgery it was something that was very very difficult and so and and, and it only gets worse with age and so let's actually go ahead and and, and hear some Let, some and testimonies. what about also the gentleman uh what's his name uh scott nugent we're going to talk about that so uh, let's you know. let's hear some testimonies from some of these folks uh yeah go ahead and then we're going to go ahead and I pull that up on the name. i don't remember uh uh yeah pull that up on the TikTok, please oh i just i kind of want to point something out here go ahead that uh 
John Arthur and I are actually not wearing matching shirts. They just <laughs> look similar. They're not matching. Okay, so for those of you on just, audio, uh, it's we're plaid. Pointing it out, I, I just kind of <laughs> let people know that we're, we didn't call each other and try to wear the same shirt or something. No, but her husband and I do have the same shirt. We shop at Walmart. That's right. <laughs> what? Yeah. I hope it's not in the. It's not Target. Uh, the, yeah. Go 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 into the Firefox capture. Yeah. I think it's the appropriate one. So go ahead and um, actually see if the YouTube capture will make that a little bit better, huh? Yeah, I like that actually. It, it, it's better. It's not quite right, but go ahead and play it, Ryan. And uh, we'll, we'll hear from some of these folks. You're going to have to go over there and click on it. TikTok is, is weird. Yeah. What's going to happen to the kids and the youth? And there's so many, like, there's so many people who regret this. There's more and more and more coming out and younger, too. And puberty blockers that been on puberty blockers. And, you know, when we get 30, 40 year olds, that are going to be like, what the f did I do when I was 16 or whatever? Like, and you can't go back. I'm sad for myself, of course, not in a victim kind of way, but in like, I need to to this process of mourning who I was is touch and go. So, but I'm sad for humanity and the children and what's gonna happen when they're screwed up. We're gonna see what's gonna happen. And I really, really hope that all these professionals get their friggin' karma because I know that some of them don't realize and some of them might be brainwashed and whatever, but some of them know exactly what they're doing. Last few years of my life, and I realized it's been a complete hell. My life Life has just went down the hill ever since I had so-called bottom surgery, trying to be a woman. And I regret it. I regret it 100%. I regret too that I ever thought I was trans, that I ever thought I could be a woman, you know, and I wish I could go back and not have any surgeries or medical transition or take any hormones, to be honest. Like, this transition has costed me so much of my health, both mental and physical, as well as certain relationships relationships in my family. Right now, I have osteoporosis, scoliosis, I have a lump in my breast, I have one inch vagina, and yeah, so it's like, I have no sex drive. I'm trying to do the transition, I'm taking testosterone injection at this point, but I can't grow any facial hair, like nothing is happening. I mean, obviously I still like wearing makeup and stuff, but makeup and hair does not make a woman, so I've been so delusional for all these years, and I just wish my family and friends weren't so supportive of my transition, you know, and I wish they sat me down and talked to me and said like, are you sure this is what you want to do? Maybe you'll grow out of this. I have so much to say <laughs> and all the things that I say are not going to be like perceived well by trans community, but I don't care. I'm leaving trans community. At this point, I identify as one binary person. Any pronoun is fine. If you see me as a man, that's fine. You can call me he. If you see me as a woman, you shouldn't. I'm not a woman. One. I thought I was one, but I'm not. Unfortunately, the trans community has become very toxic. I just think I've gone too far. Nobody, my opinion doesn't count because I'm the one with complications. That's why transition didn't make me happy. And like, I honestly think I'm just as unhappy as I was before transition. And That's what I important. really needed is therapy and help. What's up? Okay, my Pause name is Maddie, quick. and I sound like a dude, but I'm not. See, so I transition. Because this next one's really important. But but that one little blurb, and we're going to hear that over and over and over again. And so I just wanted to pause it here. Sorry, I had to help Mr. Producer there. By the way, Rai Rai, the producer guy, is doing yeoman's work over there. Thank you, sir. We're going to get a face reveal. Thank well, you, sir. We've had a face reveal, but we're going to have a camera. We need a, we'll have to get another one. But, yeah, another first face reveal. I agree. So, but the, that's really important, though, where you have someone who, who says, look, I've been through this, and it didn't improve anything. Mm-hmm. I'm All just right. as unhappy. So what so what were you saying about the mind earlier? Well, your mind it, it well you said it. You can change a person's mind. You can work with the mind. Once you start manipulating or uh the body and the surgeries and the uh, the horrible things that you're that they're doing you can't go back but the mind can be adjusted to accept who you are. The mind I mean it, it's just less regret less issues less problems if you're going to suffer depression because you feel like you're in the wrong body yes that's that's tough that's hard but this type of suffering of i can't go back there's nothing i can do 
that's it's a worse suffering because there's nowhere to go. Whereas if you're feeling like, hey, I'm in the wrong body, somebody can help mold you and shape you into accepting your body. Correct. And we see mortality right. going up after. And again, not all of them are direct suicides. We do have an increase in suicidality, but we also have, it's at the very minimum the same. 10 years out, it's at the very minimum the same, if not higher, for that individual. Well, and see, there's another what, point right there, is that the, the desire to change into from a male to a female or, or from a, a female to a male, um, 10 years out, the regret, you know what I mean? The changing back, that's the mind. That's the mind. And you want that person, you may have to journey with that person through counseling, whatever, but you want to get them to a point where they're not going to have the greater Correct. regret of, oh no, I, I'm, I no longer have my manhood because I've had surgery. Or And that's the thing that people don't, don't realize when we're talking about this. We're talking about this from a position of love. It's like, no, no, no. Yes, God hates what's happening and he does not like what's happening. The reason God hates that, the reason the Christian needs to hate it, is not that they're hating the person. It has nothing to do, it has everything to do with the fact that that person is being taken captive by a bad ideology. This is no different than saying, I hate sex trafficking. I hate trafficking of people for, 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 for their bodies because of what it does to the person. I hate what this ideology, the transgender ideology, does to people because 10 years out, they regret it. And by the way, we're not speaking for them. They are. And by the way, some of them get really mad, by the way. And, and, I, and I thought about putting in a, a, a couple of videos of this where they're talking about how the Christians use this to create their own thing and, and this and that. It's like, look, we're not trying to use you. We're saying we see what's happening to you and it hurts to watch. And more importantly, we do not want you indoctrinating children. We do not want you showing child corn to children and, and telling us that that is normal. We don't want this to become normal. This is not, right. this is not positive. Right. And what we don't have, and I'm sorry, Steve, I interrupted you No, go you ahead. No, no, no. What we don't have is the numbers of those that want to detransition is we don't, ha and I believe those numbers are very high, and that's why we need to focus on the mind accepting the body. Because once they're out of the trans community and out of that influence, and they start seeing themselves for who they are or what they really want, um, and they want to detransition, then you know you still can without the surgeries and the you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So we, without knowing the numbers, of who detransitions, and my understanding is pretty high. It, it, We're in a dangerous situation for. It's people. in a it, it, it's in a weird place because here's the thing: a lot of girls. So the vast majority of of transitioners right now are female to male, and mm -hmm. that's an inversion, as we talked about two the last week or two. That's an inversion from what it used to be, mm -hmm. where it used to be predominantly point oh whatever percent of the population were male, and they detested themselves so much, usually usually from abuse but they detested their own physical body so much that they were uncomfortable with their gender they wanted to be something else and and that's true body dysmorphia uh and body dysmorphia is a real thing there are people who suffer from it there are some people who say that they've benefited from it um i'm, I'm going to make the argument i don't think that cutting is beneficial in no in no other place will we say that cutting is beneficial i'm glad that you're finding peace look if you're if you're a transgender and you found peace uh, I think there's more peace to be had, okay? I think there's more peace to be had, but I'm very glad that you are doing better, okay? That 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 is that is not what we're coming after here. What we do want to stop though is this rampant uh, transition of children. That's the thing that's a bother, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't remember if it was the one before or this one that's getting ready to talk. I can't remember because uh, we watch so many, but. One of them had mentioned, says that, why didn't my family tell me that I was making a mistake and try to convince yes. me not to do this? Yes. And the problems that I would have, 
Why didn't they get themselves involved? Because with because it? society is telling them that you hate them if you try to stop them. Do you want a dead son or a live right. daughter? Is what they tell them. Is what they tell these parents, and these parents are listening to the experts, the so-called right. experts, so-called people who are actually thought leaders in the WPATH, the organization for writing the standards on how you treat transgenders. These people literally go on forums by the name of like Jesus or what have you and they're writing child corn about how they they want to castrate kids and then they go in on a WPATH conference and they talk about using Lupron to to inhibit the child's adolescence they, they call them puberty blockers but if you, of course if you know what Lupron is Lupron is what you use to give uh, sex offenders who harm children. Right. Or you, you use right. that word. And, Chemically and, castrate them. And so right. <laughs> these people are, are literally sick in the head. They're literally sick in the head. Let's go ahead and keep watching that TikTok there, Mr. Producer. So this is another detransition for a few years and I've been on hormones slash detransitioning for a couple of years. Here's the deal. When I went to transition, I had to go to counseling to get a letter of referral to a doctor. The doctor wouldn't see me without that, but I only had to go to like two sessions before this counselor was like, yeah, you have gender dysphoria. Let's, you need to be treated by a doctor. Let's get you this note. She wrote me the letter of recommendation. I took it to a, do a doctor and this doctor prescribed me testosterone on the first visit. Now I'm not crying and blaming them for my decisions because I I was a legal adult when I made these decisions. I knew that my voice would be permanently altered. I knew that I would permanently grow facial hair, which I still do. You can't really see it right now because I pluck my face. Literally, these tweezers are in my car all the time because on my brakes, I pluck my face. Anyways, I was a legal adult when I made these decisions. But now, my issue with this is that they're allowing these things to happen to children. Children who can't drive. Children who are not old enough to buy alcohol because their brains aren't, like, they're not mature enough to do that. Kids who aren't mature enough to apparently buy nicotine, According to the law, like they can't buy nicotine, they can't tattoo without parental consent because that's a permanent thing on your body. Why are we allowing this to happen to children? I would have been so much further along in my transition before, like if I would have started that young. And I, I'm detransitioning, so that would not have worked out the way that I thought it would work out whenever I was that. Ben that Plaza. has to be. And and we'll actually get to that interview later. This is super cut. By the way, links to all the videos in the description down below. But, um, man. I just don't know what exactly to do with all of that because what what, what you have there and we're, we're going to do matt walsh and his team did some investigative mm -hmm. journalism i don't know if oh y'all saw gosh, saw that yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think i think you're the one that sent that, sent yeah. that to me steve right and um we're, we're, we're going to take a clip from that in just a little bit but i i want to go to chloe cole actually i think we're, for the sake of time let's go to chloe cole and i want to hear what she has to say it is be on the youtube capture uh yeah and uh, let's go ahead and start. This is when she's talking about what happened after the surgery and why this 15 year old transitioned and then now she's 18. Uh, she transitioned from female to male and then detransitioned back to female. Of course, we, we in this room know that you don't detransition, you, you're a female. But go ahead and roll that, please. What do Jordan you think Peterson. is the core of your claim? that you fell prey to, say, medical and counseling malpractice. What do you think was done wrong with you? Um, quite a lot, actually. Um, the most immediate thing I can think of would be the fact that the consent forms didn't weren't, they weren't really comprehensive. They were very vague. They didn't list a, they didn't list a, um, didn't have nearly enough information on them. And I was also just too young to really fathom what any of this meant. And they, you know, you can make the argument that my parents- Well, you know, consent, consent has to be, well, consent has to be documented, but it also has to be informed. And informed means you have to understand what you're consenting to. And so from my perspective, like, especially when you were really young, say around 12 and you first went into therapy, there should have been a very deep investigation into your background and then a laying out of a whole comprehensive range of options and a lengthy discussion of the consequence of all of those options. And your parents, after the discussion had taken place with you, your parents should have been brought into that and they should have been walked through the same range of options. And then you all should have been offered 
you what what I would say the opportunity or the necessity to take a fair amount of time to really think it through, you know, on the fundamental basis that, well, we won't do anything precipitous until it's necessary, right? And that, that harkens back to the idea that if you leave most kids with gender dysphoria B, you know, most of them identify as homosexual, as I said, eventually, but 90%. most of them, the vast majority of them accept their biological status. And so... So the consent issue, it isn't only that the forms were vague and didn't detail out the, you know, the full range of consequences, it's that you needed to be walked through in great detail all of the issues that were relevant to you on the psychological and medical front, all the options that were available to you, and the pros and cons of all those options. And that should have been something that took, I would think that, I can't see in any possible way that that could have been done with any degree of thoroughness in something under six months of weekly therapy. And I would say that's an absolute minimum to walk anyone through something as complicated as what you laid out. So that's on the informed yeah. front, right? Yeah, they really presented this as, as basically the only option to both me and my parents. Um, and I also, the problem with me starting it so young was not only that I couldn't consent, I couldn't really fathom. Yeah, very good. And, and, and that's something that I don't think people really take into account is you're, you're, you have your parents making these decisions for you, but they're going to affect your, your ability to interface with your partner for the rest of your life when 90 percent 90 something percent of kids by by any stat and metric that we have i think the the, the most favorable towards the lgbt movement is 80 something uh they they go to the lesbian or gay category if you leave them alone and that is even a minor minority most people turn out to be straight like for, for example I'll, I'll talk about myself here you know i i, I struggled as as a young man and as a kid, I played with Barbies. Now, now, I play with Barbies because the girls were playing with Barbies. And guess what? That you know, the boys were over here doing that. You know, I was over with the uh, girls. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? I know exactly so what if mean. if yeah. I if I had some sick freak in 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 kindergarten teaching me, I could have been lured down that trap as a boy who did not have any gender dysphoria. Right. You didn't have body dysmorphia. I would have been I would have been lured down this path as a dude who look I was different as a kid. I would have been one of those. You know? You're different it, now. As a kid. I, you know, I still it's, am, yeah, it's yeah. funny. It's because <laughs> girls play cowboys and Indians. You know, guns or whatever. Nobody thinks anything sure. of it. Now, my daughter. I, I have four sons and one daughter, and my daughter is very feminine. But I could not get her to play with dolls. She would, I would, I would buy these dolls for her as a little girl. And, you know, I'm thinking, you're a girl, you're going to play with these dolls. She would take the doll, look at it, throw it, go get her ball, her brother's ball. <laughs> she was watching her brothers play ball and play the things that her brothers were doing. And she wanted to do that. Now, she my wanted, daughter's fine. Yeah, but your she daughter, wanted to do what they were doing. That's, she just wanted to be like her brothers. That yeah. doll meant nothing to her. Your daughter, <laughs> your daughter is an attractive, happily married woman who, yes. who, you know, yes. it, it, but you're right. If some sick freak had been her kindergarten teacher and you had abandoned her into that state. Oh, and, and she, it's possible. Yes. And she, and you know, it's so funny because I have um, six granddaughters and one, it, it's funny, one granddaughter when she was little, she just wanted to wear a dress. Okay. She did not want to wear pants, but her sister could not stand putting on a dress. Now, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just a matter of what they like and what they don't like. Uh -huh. I yeah. got a granddaughter that doesn't never liked wearing a dress. Yeah. She's yeah. 19 now, and only because she's got cousins that have convinced her that it helps her to look real feminine to wear a dress. And so on occasion, when she goes to do certain things, they'll come over and help her get ready to to do whatever it is she's doing and and help her pick out one of her dresses that she now has yeah. numerous dresses but i'll tell you what 
98 percent of the time or so when she's doing and she's got she wears pants absolutely and she loves to wear jeans that's what she does i mean i picked out yellow shoes instead of blue shoes once and i was adamant i wanted the yellow shoes as a one-year-old do you think that one-year-old is thinking about where they're going to put their private body parts in right. a marital relationship oh man you just it, liked yellow i mean i just on. liked yellow at that point and, yeah. and so guess what they would have said non-binary oh. or some some ran some well, rando see, that's, would have said that's that. the community in which you're being influenced by correct so if you know, a young boy's playing with Barbie dolls and the community in which he's being influenced by says something. Remember we talked about yes. words. Words Huge. matter. Yes. Words matter. Yes, and I do. know that, oh, so four boys, one of the boys at a very young age loved the movie Nutcracker. Okay, it's the, a ballet type thing. Right. Well, a couple of the older brothers started to say something about it and I yelled at him. I told him, no, you're not going to say that to him. Yeah. You're not going to. Now, the boy who who liked the the Nutcracker and there was ballet and all that, he, you know what? It was he liked it. It didn't affect him in any negative way. He's a very masculine man, and you is, know. Is this the youngest one? No, I wouldn't tell. <laughs> if it is, <laughs> no, if it's it, not him. Oh, okay. I was no, no. I was going to say, would, if it is, I tell you what, he's I, the one I ended up taking hog hunting. And, he killed a hog, and, and he killed a hog, and he wrestled it to the ground, and just <laughs> like he was shown. And that boy, he he's, he's not feminine. Man. I'll tell you, well, <laughs> they're all okay. men. Okay. <laughs> Forgive me, son, but it's my it's the one who does power lifting. I mean he's uh -oh. a big guy. Ain't really? nobody ain't nobody gonna mess with that kid. <laughs> now I know you're talking about it. Actually it makes sense. He's uh -oh. got a sensitive side to him, but he's he, he is a man. He's a man. He's a man. He's a man. man. He is he's a man's man. But yes, also he's sensitive. And he you know, he used to tell people, um, he, he would say, I'm a mama's boy, and I'm not ashamed of it. That's what he would tell him. I'm a mama's boy, but he's not. He's a good boy. He's 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 a man. He's a good man. Yeah. He's a man. There's a lot of men's men that are mama boys. That's I mean, right. They not just, a bad thing. They just are. So, I mean, you know. But let's move on into what can happen if you leave these people alone, and God forbid they actually come to Christ. Uh, there's there's a really good oh. video on that. It'll be oh. on the TikTok capture. I think you've oh. got that, Mr. Producer. Oh, I, I, I got something I, I need to say on that. Um, I've got a friend of mine that goes to our church that started coming to our church. He's a you know um, uh, liver transplant receiver, and he was telling me that he's got a, a gentleman that lives next to him who they used to. Uh, talk to about Jesus all the time and he's homosexual okay well all of a sudden this guy gets convicted by Jesus and he is one of the biggest proponents for Jesus now and is no longer a homosexual and man he'll tell you right off the bat if you're going down the wrong road on something and he's like man you need to go pray for this and you need to get into your bible and start reading and, and he'll he carries a little small bible with him everywhere he goes he'll pull something out and he goes you right, right here you need to read this and yeah and oh man He's like, no, the, man, it, you wouldn't believe this for, guy. Former former LGBT members are some of the best Christians you will ever meet. Uh, yes. You will find some of, some of the best Christians you'll ever meet. Some of them are LGBT formerly. So go ahead and pull that up. Speaking of which, here's a really good example of someone. You've got that uh, link. It's to 124, sir. Go ahead and run it. Make sure it's from 124. You also have to unmute it. Two years I lived like that. Beard, buffness, facial hair, and everything. And I want to, I want to show you something. I want to give you a visual of Pause. what's really going on. Because go to 0 0.001 to 124. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we want to start from the beginning. Okay, there you go. From the beginning. This was an excellent video. I transitioned, and I from lived my life as a trans male for two years. I lived like that. Beard, buffness, facial hair, and everything. And I want to, I want to show you something. I want to give you a visual of what was really going on. Because a lot of people will tell you, just be who you are, follow your heart, be happy. But the heart's deceitful, yo. Yeah. You're not here, and it's gonna lie to you. Yeah. Your heart can mislead you, and that's why God wants to give you a new heart and a new spirit. Woo! The one you've got ain't right. Hallelujah! Yeah. I didn't know that. So, 
I did this because I believed God made a mistake with me. That's how I felt. And let me show you something. People ask me, Ariana, were you happy when you were trans? And I said, you know, it didn't matter if I was male or female. I was still suffering with the same issues. That's right. I thought That's that right. that was the key. I thought, wow, I'm finally free. I can finally be who I am. And I remember posting it on social media. And low key, even as a man, I was still suicidal. I was still depressed. Oh, I still had anxiety. My family was still broken. I still didn't know Jesus. So what really changed? Nothing except for my body. That's right. That yeah. was it. I hated the way I looked. I hated the way I felt. And I was blaming the church. I was blaming my family. I was blaming my friends. Oh, I was blaming on. girlfriends come and on. boyfriends come and everybody on. else for my problems. I blamed the devil and didn't even really believe he existed. Just because I didn't want to admit that I had the issue. Man. Yes. So that yeah, right there, her own words, it's Ariana Amor, Ar Ar Amor's uh, testimony. You can find her on TikTok, by the way, link in the description below as always. Video. That's someone right there who actually has experience and they've talked about it. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw you for a bit of a loop, Mr. Producer. I'm going to ask you for the next one is going to be Matt Walsh. I'm going to ask you to pull up the Matt Walsh one and we'll come back to that uh, at the study. So it'll be the Matt Walsh one. We're going from 2.11 to uh, 3.39, if you would. Uh, and go ahead and pull that. Before we do, I want to introduce this. Matt Walsh and his team did some investigative journalism. Obviously, Matt Walsh can't say, Hi, my name is Matt Walsh, and uh, I want to you know, transition, because most, most of them know him now. So he had his producer do it. And uh, what they found was, uh, I would say, disturbing. So yeah. go ahead and play that, sir. Because we just spent weeks investigating the largest providers of so-called trans health care in the country. We went undercover at one of them. And what we found is that there are no real standards of care governing any of this. To be clear, there are standards of care, quote unquote, on paper. And they're provided by the transgender activist group WPATH. WPATH standards are used by major hospitals in this country, including UCLA, UCSF, Mass General, just to name a few. How rigorous are these standards exactly? Well, after a 22-minute video call, the largest trans healthcare provider in the country, carefully following the WPATH guidelines, approved one of my producers, Greg Ray, for an orchiectomy. Pause. That means testicle removal. Oh, actually, he explains it. Keep going. Keep going. Now, 22 minutes would be a record time to get approved for an orchiectomy if you had a real medical reason for it, like testicular cancer. It's insane to approve any serious procedure that quickly having just met a patient in a video call for the first time but that's what happened and we recorded the whole call at no point did anyone at this healthcare provider which is called plume push back in any way they didn't suggest that maybe this was a rash course of action they didn't verify any of the information greg provided including his fake name that he gave them all plume did was insist that he pay 150 bucks if Greg did that, they promised to write him a medically sound letter in support of life-altering surgery. That letter... Okay, so let's talk about that for a moment. <laughs> isn't there something predatory about this at this point? Isn't there something that, that just feels off and predatory when you have, a, you know, it's a $150 call, and which we'll talk about in a minute, and Scott Nugent, Scott Nugent, came along and said, look, you, 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 you look at this and you've got between one and two million dollars in uh, per person, hormones and chemicals per person mm -hmm. yes. is for the rest of their life and now is going to be taxpayer funded. Yes. Pause. Taxpayer <laughs> funded. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. I need to get my tin foil. <laughs> my land. You had John Arthur worried. <laughs> I was like, are you good? <laughs> my land. I, no, it, it, this is this is ridiculous. This is the, medically. And what he's talking about is, is correct. Nobody makes that type of decision right away. No, and, and it, it's not healthy. It's not sane. But, of course, it's not about that. It's about the politics and it's about the economics. Which mm -hmm. the two chairs are empty there, but I'll, I'll fill the economics for a moment. And then I'll have Steve do the politics real quick. From the economic side, obviously, you you have imagine you're getting hundred and fifty dollars for one phone call. That is a really good telemedicine practice. 
that is a really good telemedicine practice. In fact, you have people stacked up and so that you have an eight minute break and then you go and you have another 30 minute call with someone and you're just banging people out it's and it's the easiest a, thing. It's probably a generic letter. Whoa. It's a generic letter. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, We'll, we'll watch that in a second, but it is. And so there's economics to it, but the politics of it, that's really interesting. And, and so I'll, I'll, and, I'll throw and this And the politics Steve. is is that you've got big pharma that is paying millions of dollars to politicians, and then you've got politicians that are, are favorable to this sort of thing. Not only that, politically, you've got school boards that are okay with putting these type of people, not just the school boards, but you've got the uh, superintendents and the principals that are hiring these people and putting them in where? Elementary schools, mm -hmm. first, second, and third graders that to have teach absolutely... these people that exactly have no clue about anything except hey look uh they're they're make a friend with a couple of girls cup and two girls or five girls are, are playing something and do and what they happen to play that that day with them doing whatever because they're friends that day and the teacher sees that oh you know something your son is actually a girl, and you really need to do something about that's that. Very, I know. It's very dangerous. You need to go and have a talk with the doctor about this. Now, you can call, and, and not only that, politically, you can get, they have funding mm -hmm. for you to be able to do this also because they'll and, back and, you up. And the thing about it is, you know, is children do not comprehend it. So the young woman who at the age of 18 was detransitioning and she had her surgery at 15, even still at right. 15, she goes, I didn't comprehend. And they don't. I mean, they, you're living in a world where they see all these superheroes and, you know, it's kind of. The, I, I the imagination is running a lot faster than science yes, and, and medical yes. procedure could actually keep up with. They're, I don't think they're comprehending that. What is going because they don't comprehend a sexual relationship at that age? There's no, they may have even experienced sex because they're introducing it more, but they don't understand the relationship part of it and what is actually involved. And that poor woman at the age of 18 is realizing, What in the world did y'all do to me? I didn't, I didn't understand well, this. And not only that, they don't understand major consequences to yes. your life. Well, As we get into our lives and, and getting older, just like you, John Arthur, and our producer, Ryan, y'all are getting to the stage to where in life you're making decisions on your own and you're understanding there are major consequences to your decisions because who are they affecting? They're affecting you, period. Not anybody else, you and what they do in your life and they follow you wherever you go. It doesn't matter if you move on the other side of the world. Those consequences follow you, and they stay with you for the rest of your life. Yeah, absolutely. And, and by the way, speaking of that, actually, if you can go back to that Scott Nugent story, because we never got that for that was that uh, I think it was the third clip, second clip, third clip. It's the it's a YouTube video, uh, and wanted to run it from. Uh, uh, Let's see yeah and i think i think we had it set up yes sir Nugent. so i i, I want to i want to see what that looks like in real time thank you mr producer you're doing good you're doing well uh uh and you're doing good too thank you thank you you're doing well and you're doing you're doing well and you're doing a good thing <laughs> okay I, I caught myself there for the grammar nazis out there and Bethany, she I'm talks at you. about consequences yeah let's Big go time. ahead and let's go ahead and play that 
some people would see you and see a man and say, well, that's a man. But are you saying it's not possible to change sex? No, God, no, it's biologically impossible for one sex to become another. What's not impossible is to take cross-sex hormones to do cosmetic surgery to appear like the opposite sex for comfort. You know what? We deserve all the respect and dignity for doing so. But what we don't need to do is step on children's heads and ensure that males with these Maybe fetishes yeah. keep their erections um, so that they're okay in life. This is a really important point. In a liberal society, surely everyone should be able to do whatever they want with their own body sure. and make decisions about themselves and their own identity. But you've spent a lot of time talking about children, and, and that, that is a different situation, isn't it? Because children sh can't consent to this kind of thing, can they? They cannot consent to these things. And until the truth is told about medical transition, until it's told that there's not now 12 complications of medical transition. They just increased it to 25 because they just actually turned over another study. All seven studies that said it was beneficial have been retracted or modified with, oops, doesn't help anything, sorry, or uh, not enough time. The latest one went from 12 complications to 26 complications. And inside that study, there were two kids that committed suicide that were being medically transitioned that was suppressed. You need to know that. So, sorry, are you saying that the studies that are available into the transitioning of children, and there can't be many because it hasn't been going on for that long, that they're all coming back and saying, we don't have any evidence that this is helping matters? Yes! <laughs> well, you can't be... Yes! Clear, but... And that's not transphobic! But, but we have queer theory right here, right? Gay, not queer. Thank you very much, by the way. We need more righteous gays and lesbians to come up and actually take our community back instead of the righteous... So, and, and by the way, for, for, for the gays against groomers and all those people out there, good on you. Uh, don't agree with you on a lot of things, but on that, we can all, we can all join together and say, yeah, let's, let's, let's leave mm -hmm. the kids alone. Um, when you have science that is beholden to ideology, that's when you get situations like this, where yes, you yes. have people who do not know. They do not know what they do not know because the scientists, the experts so-called, have suppressed the information. And, and again, uh, you know, you, you can dig out the tinfoil hat over here. Uh, we, we have a situation right now where they're hiding data. And they're Correct. manipulating it. Because why? Because if you are within the ESG tent, you you get more funding. You can't come out and do a study of how transitioning kids harms kids. You can't come out and do that and get funding. That's, you, yeah, and there you go. If you want to do that, you will lose your academic credentials. You will lose your right. freedoms. And so what's the end game to this? Well... I mean, some people will say population control, right? Some people would yeah. say it's a it's an issue of uh, um, money, and and both of which are possible because again, we know the people behind ESG also want a populate world population of five hundred million, not eight billion, and mm -hmm. you see that this doubling rate it'll only take fifty years before twenty percent of the population isn't producing purely because they're castrated. Uh, at the doubling rate, it's only going to take, uh, what, what is it, Al it's going to be like Charlie, you know, because now we're back in alpha generation, right? It'll be generation Charlie if we don't stop this. It's going to be, you know, we have 2% of this generation, 4% of, of uh, alpha, 8% of Bravo, 16% of Charlie. You're going to have 20% of the population who is sterilized if we don't stop that in 50 years. We'll have 20% of the population that is sterile. Because they were, it was done to them when they were children. And right. I think that they'll die young. I don't think that they'll live long life because I think of the chemical. Nugent says right. Nugent's not going to be around that long. Scott Nugent says yeah. will not be around for much longer because nope. that person is constantly having staph infections and all sorts of other problems because they uh, the the fake again. If you have kids in the room, three, two, one. The fake man part that they cut the arm off and made that man part of. Ex it grows six inch hair that gets stuck and it twirls in and it infects that fake appendage right and yep. and because oh, it, it's my. not it's not real it's not real it's not i'm sorry a woman can never have what a man has and a, and a man can never have what a woman has you can try to reattach something and, so, and they're and they're trying to do that now we've talked about that we've covered that it, it, you, you it, can do a frankenstein's monster but the fact of the matter is, it is a Frankenstein's monster. It is not a cloud nine sexual paradise. And, and, and that kind of leads, leads us around to, I, I want to start to focus in 
on the biblical aspect of this because i know that you have thoughts and you have verses and then well, i want to come over to mr steve what i was going to just bring out here is in in you know proverbs chapter five six and seven and this is this is the problem i think that we we are set on is that everybody is talking about sexual pleasure sex 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 and when we see in, in proverbs uh five six and seven talks about the young man who goes to the uh the stranger the woman who is a stranger mm -hmm. and it's for one thing only i mean he has to for forsake wisdom and knowledge and it's for one thing only and that is the, the pleasure of sex but the bible talks about how it costs your very soul when you start taking on this behavior and what we're doing in our society now is we are introducing the pleasure of sex to the young children who should not even be thinking about the children don't think about that at, no. at, at young ages I, that I, is something I, that's introduced to them when they start going through puberty that's when they start having the feelings and the changes and things like that little children don't even have those thoughts if they're left alone right you have to as an adult have to introduce you. them to that so that's number one is that when you focus just on the pleasure of sex what you do is you rob the individual of actually having a healthy relationship a healthy sexual relationship with their their spouse and that's that's all intentional that's that's satan and his intent to corrupt and that it, it, it's really sad is because um, if you ever talk to somebody who's had multiple partners or practiced multiple deviant behaviors and stuff, it's really hard for them to end up in a very strong relationship that God intended. And so they, they actually get robbed in the long run. Well, isn't that, isn't that the thing, though? That, that is what the purpose of sex is. It, so I, I was listening to um, uh, Revive Our Hearts. And that's by uh, a podcast by Nancy Damas Wakamuth. And she had a lady on, I, sorry, I'm just had a long, long week. Mm -hmm. I am not remembering very well the names off the top of my head. Uh, this one lady was a guest on Dr. So-and-so. She says something really interesting. She goes, when you realize that everything on earth was created from God's mind and from his being and from his soul, truth itself was created from the identity of God. You would come to realize that there's, there's a purpose for the rocks, there's a purpose for the trees, there's a purpose for the flowers, there's a purpose for sex. And she says, when you have a skewing of that, what mm -hmm. you see is destruction of something that God laid out that was supposed to be beautiful. It was supposed to be something that, that, that affected you to the soul in a way. And because sexuality affects you to the soul, it, yes. it, it comes to your core of your being. There's something about that that is literally grasping at how God interacts with us. Well, in the, in the verse in here that talks about um, it's a sin against your soul when you are, you know, have multiple partners and that's all you're focused on. And, you know, for, I don't want to get, um, but in Proverbs 5, where it says in verses 18, Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind, the pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. And be thou ravished always with her love. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosoms of a stranger? For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. And so one of the things in, in my personal devotions this week is the blessings of life and the curses of life and if you really want blessings in a relation in a, a in your sexual relationship with your spouse then you hold the ground that god has given and he blesses you in that and when you go outside of those walls and those realms that god has laid out then it's it's your life is working against you god is working against you yes absolutely mr steve i agree um yeah you know the, these videos that we've seen so far are so interesting in listening to all of these detransitioners and the problems they occur and the, the people that have talked to them about it. And then, of course, uh, the last one we watched about 
uh, God getting involved in this person's life. Absolutely amazing what happened with that person. There's one thing here, John Arthur, if you don't mind me uh, Go ahead. reading this, and this is from that study that was done in Sweden. Yep. And this is a uh, the limitation strengths and limitations that was done in this study. It is therefore important to note that the current study is only informative with mm -hmm. respect to transition transsexual persons health after reassignment no inferences can be drawn as to the effectiveness of sex reassignment as a treatment for transsexualism because if you because if you do you come against the agenda and right. even this one study that's very well done is still it's a retrospective study i mean it's it's correct. looking at actual deaths correct correct in other words the results should not be interpreted such as sex reassignment per se increases morbidity and mortality hmm things might have been even worse without sex reassignment i don't know about that Let well, it, it, it's actually things get better, and let, let's be clear: the the, the 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 transition surgery did not kill them, but it sure didn't help them. It sure didn't help them. No, it didn't. And all, in at the very least, at the very least, it did nothing. At the very, you know, to our point, at the very best, it put them. It, it gave them something to regret so horribly that they turned to drugs or to suicide or to criminality right. or they changed their lifestyle so badly and or they that, were reviled by, by that it. is exactly right it has I, all had problems i did hear the study of a, a gentleman who lived as a woman for 10 years and then detransitioned and his for him he said 80 percent of all uh, those that transition have an, a drug or alcohol problem they have a, some sort of addiction because they don't find the peace of mind that they are truly looking for. And what's interesting is they make an analogy with a psychiatric problem. As an analogy, similar studies have found in increased somatic morbidity, suicide rate, and overall mortality for patients treated for bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Now, you have a 25% representation of, of the transgender population present as, let me phrase that, 25% of the transgender population present as schizophrenic. Right. Now, they're making an analogy that these are similar to, you know, bipolar disorders and psyche, uh, psych, uh, schizophrenia. schizophrenia. Well, some may have these problems, which they've discovered, but to make an analogy that you know gender dysphoria is similar to these disorders is well it it, it, it know, is not it, I, it I, is in I a way because it has it has a whole host of similar complications why do you think it's not because I know some I've I've known people that have schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. I know a few too. Okay. Quite a few. Man, you talk about difficult to people to deal with. Mm hmm Okay. Especially when all of a sudden if they stop having to take medication. Yep. But well, man alive, I'm gonna tell you. Now people with Gender dysphoria don't have those types of problems when you deal with them. Twenty-five percent of them do have schizophrenia. Now that's so different. It's it's okay. it's it's a high representation. It's some what you have is you have a confluence of a lot of different problems, and I think what both of you, what you and I are trying to say, all of that data. What that means is these people need help. I agree. They don't need to have body parts chopped off. I completely agree and, with you. Or, or, or fake ones added or grafted That's what on. this is all about, is what is the best way to help these people? And what we're doing right now is not the best way. 
No. I agree with you. No, and it's, it's just, it, you know, it's like with uh, bipolar problems and schizophrenic problems, they don't start chopping off people's body parts. Oh, I'm, I'm schizophrenic. I need to cut off my hand because of let, you know, my other person says I need to have this hand cut off. Let's use no, a real man. They don't cut their hand off. Let's use a normal, uh, a normal one. Uh, girls who cut. Okay. Do we ever tell them you go, girl? You live your truth. Right. What? 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 No. What, 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 what kind of person would say that? Uh. What kind of person would even do that? Well, masochist, maybe. Yeah. Well, it, or, W Path R. I mean, or, they're, they're literally know. into masochistic corn. I don't yeah. know if you could address this the same way, but um, uh, bulimia, is it? Yes, bulimia. Right. Um, you don't, people have a problem with their body. That's why they're starving themselves, because they look fat in the mirror. Yeah. Well, we're going to correct your, you're not fat, you're skin and bones, and we're going to do everything we can to get your mind to see your body, to accept your body as it is. Right. So. It, you know, it's a similar in a, in, a, in a sense, whereas they don't like their body. And yeah. so they're trying to starve themselves because I, I'm, they're looking for, you know. To me, that's in a better analogy right. than. And the What is a Woman uh, uh, documentary by Matt Walsh in the Daily Wire, they actually reference, I, I looked this up, Body Integrity Identity Disorder, BIID, mm -hmm. where someone wants to identify as transable where they cut off a limb. And they want, they fetishize in their mind. And it may or may not even be a sexual fetish, but it's like, a, it's an intense desire to be disabled. We don't tell that person that we can have body affirming uh, care. We would call that person who cuts that limb off a monster and rightfully so. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. That's, no, yeah. You need, you need, you've got a psychiatric problem and we need to deal with this and and talk to you and get you someone who talks to you about this and let's do it in a way that's loving it's kind and Correct. it's and it's focused on restoration so i i think i think that's the main thing so i, I agree with you final thoughts for the day Miss Nikki from the chair of uh, theology. Well, again, it, this is not beating up people who are suffering. This is a matter of we're just trying to say there are better ways to bring you into agreement with your body that's not going to cause long-term harm to you later on. Absolutely. That's what this is really about. It's just the, the manner of care in which you receive that you can, in 10 years from now, not have greater regrets than what you do today. Absolutely. From the chair of philosophy, I'm just going to... Actually, I'll let you go first. From your culture. Uh, okay, I'll, go ahead. Well, what I'm going to do is bring the culture and the political chair together, and and say that um, politically we need to uh, get rid of all this influence with the big pharmaceutical country com companies because what they're going to do is they're going to push their agenda in order to try to get more dollars involved and the thing is is we need to really talk to these people that are christian with people that are christian based psychologists yeah. or people that are just therapists mm -hmm. and talk to them on a christian stance and a christian background and let them know that god loves them loves their bodies loves their minds and they need to bring those two together in harmony yes and that's what needs to be done in harmony with their body because they're in the bible read and it's just like that person we watched that video on talked about god loves you cares about you yeah and that's where we need to go with these people yeah and I and and what it is is Satan is driving that into them and drilling a hole in them and working his lies just like he always does. Well, we are creating the image of God, and if we can destroy the image, exactly, we can attack God. Yep. And that's exactly what they want to do. From the chair of philosophy, what they want to do is they want to destroy 
your view of God and of reality. Amen on that. George. They want to break who you are as a person down to your body parts. Once they've done that, they've taken away the image of God and they have there you're you're not God and you don't have godhood but God is offering you sonship or daughtership that image bearer he's offering you well even more than just a bearer he's offering you an inheritance with right. him and in a relationship with him and if they can destroy that satan's one and that's what they're trying to do. And what we see is that it is like anything else in uh, uh, in the world where, where Satan commits, wants you to commit sin. He wants you to buy a cheaper knockoff of what God offers. So just remember, it's always just a cheaper knockoff. You know, just to throw in there, when we've had a podcast on, um, you know, various so-called pagan gods one of the big things was always deviant sex yep and that's, that's true and that and no. that's because it's a perversion of what god has laid out exactly if you like this podcast like comment share subscribe all that good stuff and uh, with that said keep the hate comments coming for those of you who are writing them we enjoy reading them and they give us purpose yeah. and uh, thank you youtube for what you're doing we know that we are Ooh. doing the right thing uh, Rumble, thank you. Uh, I think it's 75 subscribers now, so just hey, slow trickle. All right. Just slow hey, trickle. Uh, it's hard to break in on Rumble, but uh, almost 200 is like 198,000 uh, downloads. Uh, yes. We always see a little dip during summer, so tell your friends. Tell your friends that we like it. We always see that little bit of a dip. Hopefully, uh, you share this podcast. Sharing, sharing is sharing. Sharing is the new caring on YouTube yes. and everything else. Uh, catch us on Twitter at Further Every Day, et cetera. But that said, we love you all so much. Thank you. Have a great week. Man, thank you. Bye. All right. All right. So if you're still here, again, you are indeed listening or you fell asleep. Miss Nikki, what do you think the most important thing when talking to someone about uh, the transgender issue? You know, we, we've all, we've all, we all have friends, family who were gay, mm -hmm. lesbian, mm -hmm. transgender. What do you think the most important thing to remember is if you do it in a word or in a sentence as a Christian? If you're giving someone advice, how to approach, what's the most important thing to remember? I think I would always want to say how important you are before the Lord. And if you're important to the Lord, you're important to me. And I, I really would like to always address it out of love. Mm -hmm. Love and concern for the individual, for their soul, for their life. Yeah, uh, in a word or a sentence, Steve. Yeah, I agree on that. That how much God loves you, Jesus cares so much about you, and that's why His sacrifice on the cross was made. And that one of the most important things, one of them, along with many others, is that finding a person of the opposite sex for you that is evenly yoked in a christian belief system it is so very important to have that in a marriage and it man it is very important indeed those are both very very good starting points what i would come from is what i do come from with this is either either i'm wrong and i'm well-intentioned and i love you and I and I and I have my best my best desire or my, my desire is, is is your best okay that that that's my hope or I'm right and my desire is your best mm. either one of those I want you to walk away speaking to the person who's suffering LGBT whatever my intention is for you to walk away thinking he's either well intentioned but wrong or maybe he has a point. And I want to start the conversation and end the conversation with that. I want you to know that it's not about you. It's about the ideology. It's about what could be hurting Correct. you. I want to make sure that you make it through this world with the true best fulfillment that you could ever have. And that is in Jesus Christ. And again, either I'm wrong but well-intentioned or I'm right. And maybe you should look look into it. Right. With that said, go forth, preach the gospel, use words only when necessary. We love you so much. Bye-bye.
for real this time. 